In the beginning of Ted 2, you meet uh, Ted is finally uh, going to marry Tammy Lynn. John has since been divorced for uh, quite some time uh, from, from his wife, uh, Lori. And, um, and as much as John's excited for Ted, he's also pretty depressed about his situation, how his relationship kind of deteriorated. They're getting married in the same church. And uh, of course, John is uh, Ted's best man. And shortly after, uh, you know, they're married, reality sets in, and, and uh, so Ted is now trying to figure out a way to save his marriage, and then they go on a journey to, uh, to allow Ted to become a dad. Uh, John and Ted are the ultimate buddies. You know, uh, in the first movie, John was trying to walk that fine line of maintaining his uh, relationship with his best friend, but also becoming more mature uh, and becoming the man that his girlfriend uh, and future wife wanted him to be. Uh, and they're still hanging out as often as possible, getting into trouble. Uh, you know, they share all the same interests in movies and pop culture and all those things. And they also, uh, they like to have a good time. Ted is now doing everything he can to hold on to Tammy Lynn, so he wants to be a father. Uh, and that poses uh, many different uh, and interesting challenges along the way. Um, so deciding to, whether it's deciding to recruit uh, Sam Jones to be a sperm donor or trying to break into Tom Brady's house uh, to extract sperm from him while he's sleeping to my uh, offering up my services and then uh, realizing that Tammy Lynn is unable to, uh, to conceive a child because of past drug use and other. <laughs> other, other problems that she has. Uh, and then when they go to try to adopt, uh, they're denied the ability to adopt because they said Ted isn't a person. Uh, and then we're going to go and try to prove that Ted is, in fact, a person. We go to her uncle, who was this very high-powered uh, attorney in Boston, and he doesn't want to deal with this sort of thing. So he basically just kind of pawns us off to his, uh, his, his niece who has just passed the bar. And so, you know, she gets some experience. We get a lawyer pro bono. Uh, but we hit it off right away. Uh, even though we have different interests, uh, at the core, she's a very, very good person. And we recognize that right away. And we do have that common interest in, in uh, enjoying uh, marijuana from time to time, which helps us bond quickly. So, uh, you know, we start smoking pot with her, she decides to take the case, and, uh, and then we become fast friends. We have a real cause here, and I think people are really going to want to root for Ted and see him succeed. And uh, to see John find himself in a, in a relationship that, that, that makes sense is going to work. And uh, this story is just getting more and more crazy and more and more outrageous. Uh, the things that we can get away with because of the success of the first one are really able to push the envelope but also balancing that heart. So between the heart and the humor, I think uh, the movie's going to be uh, much better than the first one. Yes, Donnie is back. He's been tracking us in Boston. He has now a, a new evil plan. Um, we're working with various toy companies to figure out how Ted uh, works and hopefully make others so uh, the toy companies can make billions and millions of dollars recreating uh, uh, the Ted doll. Hey Lisa, here with some more comedy for you. Remember the film Meet the Fockers? Well, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, would not allow the use of the name Fokker unless the filmmakers could find an actual person with the last name. So obviously out there somewhere is someone called Fokker and hopefully her kids call her mum and not mother. Now remember to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all the latest releases.